Okay guys, I'm here with another AP Statistics video with a new and improved screen recorder, so now my videos are going to be longer and better. Great, right? So anyways, today we're going to be talking about writing hypotheses, and these are statements that are necessary for you to write so that you can perform, you know, the different kinds of tests that AP Statistics requires of you. Today we're going to be talking about the first part of those tests, which is writing hypotheses. And as I've written on the, on the slide, it's easy, and I'm going to show you how and why it's so easy. So, the first thing you need to know is whenever you run a test, you have to write two hypotheses, right? Two of them, right? Can't stress enough. You have to write the null hypothesis, as well as the alternative hypothesis. And I'll talk about what those means right now. The null hypothesis retains the status quo. And let me explain. In any situation or scenario you're given to test, the they're going to say something has some effect or some event occurs or some res something results out of this scenario. Now the null hypothesis says that this didn't happen and that what ha what occurs normally is what is what is going to occur from continually and that there is no change as a result of whatever treatment you implied. So this so when we write the null hypothesis, we're going to say that there is no change or no effect no change or no effect. So what about the alternative hypothesis? Well, the alternative hypothesis is just the opposite of the null hypothesis. Here, you're going to change the status quo. There's going to be some change or some effect. So let's talk about what these mean in a problem. Here's a sample problem. In 2004, Vertex Pharmaceuticals, a biotechnology company, issued a press release announcing that it had filed an application with the FDA to begin clinical trials on an experimental drug, VX680, that had been found to reduce the growth rate of pancreatic and colon cancer tumors in animal studies. Data resulting from the plan that clinical trials can be used to test the following hypotheses, which we'll write. Alright, so we'll cover what this means, or I'm pretty sure you know that mu means or the mean or average, right? So, they're going to test the hypothesis surrounding the true mean growth rate of tumors. Now, we want this drug to have an effect, right? So, what would the null hypothesis be? Well, the null hypothesis would be that there would be no effect, and that the drug does not slow the growth rate, or the, dr the growth rate has remained the same. I should mention, this is the convention for writing the null hypothesis. This little zero right here, it's H naught or H null. Just remember this is the notation for the null hypothesis. Of course you could always write out null hypothesis, but that wastes time and on the AP statistics for your response you need to work quickly. So our null hypothesis is that the drug does not slow down the growth rate, that there's no change. And so the alternate would be the opposite. The experimental drug does slow the growth rate, because that's the effect we want, right? We want to change the status quo, we want the drug to slow down the growth rate of tumors, and so that's what our null alternate hypothesis will be. And that's the notation for the alternate hypothesis. Let's try it one more time with a slightly different scenario. <clears throat> in this problem, a new flu vaccine claims to prevent a certain type of flu in 70% of the people who are vaccinated. In a test, vaccinated people were exposed to the flu. Is this claim too high? Now here's the little different. Now we're using proportion. And... And they're claiming that this claim is too high. So they're saying that act the actual proportion is lower, right? So that's our effect that we want. We want, in this case, we want the proportion to be lower. So what will our null hypothesis be? So no change, right? We want the no change to retain what we already know. So we're going to say in the null hypothesis that the proportion in which the flu is prevented is 70%, or 0.7. And that our change that we desire is going to be that it is less than 70%. So alternative hypothesis is that the proportion is less than 0.7. I hope this video has helped you guys learn how to write hypotheses. And I'll see you soon for another video. Toodles!